Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today we are going to talk about YouTube drama because why not? Okay, there was a video, and I'm not gonna jump on stuff if you want to dig into this and find all this stuff out, you can. I feel like I do have an interesting take on the topic just because of how I've lived my life. You know, I'm old as dirt and shit and stuff, so I've been around a little bit. I will leave links down below to um, people who have talked about the topic and some people who got um, kind of thrown under the bus and some shit like that. So here we go. Somebody made a video and it was kind of sour grapes. The reason why this person was making the video. They were basically making a video because they've been doing YouTube for three years and it wasn't paying off for them yet. But they only have 11 videos or 12 videos in three years. So, like, I don't know, like, what guru they listened to where they were like, oh, yeah, you know, you, you can make art videos on YouTube and, like, really blow up in three years with 11 videos. Um, I've never heard that advice before. And I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying. It's like eating raw chicken and then being like surprised when you get salmonella it's like well really like you're supposed to cook that just like you're supposed to cook your damn youtube channel okay so because of this this person decided to kind of go after someone who's kind of big in the community and using them as an example of running a pyramid scheme. After seeing all the videos I've seen on this, I don't know if people understand what a pyramid scheme is. I think I think they were using the term pyramid scheme and like in their head like interchanging it with just scammer. Cuz like I don't understand where the pyramid scheme comes into whatever. When I hear people who don't know what they're talking about talking about something, I just get annoyed and I just like kind of walk away. Anyway, the thing that was interesting though, they were saying how the younger generation of like artists and creatives on YouTube are very entitled thinking they deserve things and deserve traction and deserve monetization and deserve all this other stuff, which I guess... There's a lot of entitlement all over the place. I don't think it's just YouTube, and I don't think it's just the younger generations. I think it's basically everyone. Like, everyone feels a bit entitled to something. Especially when they've been told that social media, like, levels the playing field. Which it doesn't. I mean, it does in the sense that the bar to entry is lower. If we're talking thumbnails, like... Someone with a really nice thumbnail is going to do better than someone with one of my thumbnails. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that is. The other thing is, is that it's just so weird. Like, I knew this when I was 20. Because I saw it in bands I was in through high school. The only thing that separates you from being able to, like, make a living on your art, whatever it is, music, music writing, stand-up, acting, uh, painting, sculpting, whatever the hell it is. The only thing that separates, I would say, 95% of the people doing that to be able to do that full-time is longevity. They've been doing this for so long that they've been able to slowly, slowly, slowly acquire an audience. Okay, so right off the bat, longevity is going to be the thing that you're going to need. Um, when most of the people who are weighing in, not everyone who's weighing in on this is what I'm about to say, but when people who are either involved in this or weighing in on this are like just a year or two out of college or haven't even gone to college yet and are just kind of out of high school or basically early 20s, early to mid 20s. I don't know if you've been around long enough to like cultivate a following unless you have are one of those 5% of people that I was talking about who ends up doing some like viral thing on accident and um, you explode overnight, okay? 
But the problem with most people who explode overnight is that they are completely unprepared for it and they don't know how to like hang on to those people after they explode. And then they're worried about trying to match the intensity level of the thing they put out to get that viral video in the first place or viral post. So then they, they, they hesitate and they don't know what to do. Okay. So again, you need to like be in it for a really long time. If you are somebody who does not have an MFA and is not a part of a community that can help get you work and get you into galleries and get you into universities and all this other shit, then you need to have a lot of work. Like quantity matters. We've talked about this before. You need to have a ton of shit. Like when you are finishing the thing you're working on, you need to be going into the next thing. I was listening to this book. I'll do a book review of it. I can't remember what it's called. But they were talking about Anthony Trollope and how no matter what, he would write seven pages a day. No matter what. So even if he finished a book and he still had like four pages to go, he would put paper in the typewriter and start working on the next book. Because seven pages every day. That was his thing. Okay? That mindset... That is what you have to have if you do not have a team doing things for you. Whether that team is a publicist and an agent and a manager, or it's like a really good alumni system, a university system, a gallery, radio stations, whatever. Like, I don't know if people listen to radio anymore, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if you don't have a, like a network to lean on, the only thing you can do is put out as much fucking work as possible, okay? Now, a lot of you are gonna say, that's really bad advice, that puts pressure and stress on me. Then don't fucking do it. Like, I'm not telling you you have to do this. I'm also not telling you to quit your fucking job. I'm also not telling you to sell your house, okay? Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm just telling you, if you want, like, the best chance of things working out for you, this is what you gotta do. The last thing you have to do is make a video like attacking other people who have nothing to do with you and have never like said boo or said anything wrong to you ever and start attacking them like really hard because like your your feelings are hurt? Like I don't get it. The other thing is, it's just like try. You, you make videos on YouTube, okay? And you don't get a lot of views on them, okay? either you're not meant for YouTube or do something else or just like pay for some advertisement. This person was also complaining, and this is so funny. This is like such a fucking noob thing, okay? Anytime somebody is like, yeah, you know, I'm never going to run ads on my channel. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do paid promotion. The people who say that are the people who cannot do it because they don't have the watch time hours and they don't have the subs, okay? Now the person who I'm talking about, because of all of the attention they've gotten from like calling people out, now they're able to monetize. And now it's like, oh, well, uh, you know, but I do wanna say that I'm not gonna do anything, you know, that's kinda, it's like, who fucking cares? Nobody cares. We live in a world where this is the shit that happens. We are on YouTube. It does not cost us anything to be on YouTube, and YouTube is kind enough, if you will, to give us money if we are like having people watch our stuff, okay? If you don't like that model, pay to have a website and just hope that the Google gods will bring people to your website. But don't run ads on your site because then like you're back in the same boat as you were with AdSense and YouTube. You see what I'm saying? Everybody has to do something, especially if you are on a free service. You do not have to be on social media. You know what you could do? You could do what people did before social media and just hustle your little bustle outside and like do like art fairs, do bookstores, do coffee shops, do libraries, do um, galleries, do flea markets, do swap meets. Do stuff outside where you have to talk to people and see if you could sell your stuff that way. And that way, I mean, you're not having to like run ads, like these annoying ads that keep popping up and making your life so difficult being a watcher of the YouTubes. And then you just have to pay for space at all these places and pay for all the stuff that you have to have, but then you could sell your art. 
you know? That's something you can do. Or you can, like, go after somebody who did nothing to you because you're mad that they're making money. Who cares? This whole thing just sounds so, like, sad. This one dude did a great video on it. I think his video was so super good. The end of the video when he actually started to, like, come down on the person. The, the the part before that, I felt like I'm like, wow, you're really cutting this person a lot of slack here. <laughs> because like, and the thing is like, I guess in a vacuum, a lot of the stuff that the person was saying makes sense, okay? But as soon as you understand the context of everything that happened, like it's almost like super fucking gaslighting to like listen to the video. <laughs> The video where it's like, hey, I'm really humble now. And, you know, I'm going to brag a little bit, but I'm super humble. Going after people, as somebody who gets frustrated a lot and has been known to yell on YouTube a lot, I'm going to warn anybody against doing that. Because once you do that, that's going to be the type of person who comes to watch your stuff, the people who like rant videos. So then you're gonna make more rant videos because that got you attention. It's just like, is it negative reinforcement? But basically like you did something naughty and you got attention for it. And so you're like, ooh, I should do that again. And then you keep doing that. Then when you do a normal video, no one's gonna watch it because you got all these new subs who just wanted to see the drama. And now that the drama's over, they don't give two SH, things about you. So you're actually hurting your channel more because once the algorithm goes, oh, we were wrong about this channel, people don't like watching this channel. Like, it's gonna be hard for you to break that and get back into the algorithm. It's gonna be really hard. So the best thing to do is just do your work. Keep your head down, focus, do your work, and go. If your work is good, if your videos are good, if you have a great personality on camera and you have all the stuff to make your videos look great, cream rises to the top. That's it. Like you will find an audience. If you are awkward as hell on camera and your videos look like crap and you're not very good at what you do anyway, you're probably not going to do very well on here. You know, and I remember in the video, the person said... Did they do better on Instagram? Okay, well, go do better on Instagram. You're not going to make any money on Instagram, but you might get more views and little hearts. Do you want hearts or do you want money? Like, and I'm not trying to be a dick, but like anybody who is out of school and still an artist is trying to make money doing it. Like, that's the hope. That's the goal. And all these people who act like, like money is a bad thing and you shouldn't ever ask for money for anything, you're, you guys are crazy. Like, can you imagine if like, I don't know, pick any other fucking line of work, like your mechanic, like you take your car to the shop and then you're like, well, I want you to work on my car, but only if you don't ask me for any money, because that's just tacky. Like, I don't like that. I know you're you're skilled at this, but come on. Like, let's not make this gross. Just fix my car, damn it. Like, no one would ever do that in a million years. So, like, art artists are no different. Like, if an artist can make money doing commercial art, and that's okay, an artist making, like, art that is, like, ripping out of their chest to come out, that's okay. You could pay them for that. It's fine. And if like making that money, because like somebody said in one of the videos I was watching that like artists have to have different income streams now and that artists have to be a brand and all this other stuff. That's always been the case. That's not a new thing. If you are good at what you do and you're good at marketing, you're a brand period. If you are good at what you do, but you're not good at marketing and you hire someone to do the marketing for you, they're going to make you a brand. That is what their job is. Okay. 
So, like, I mean, Shakespeare was a damn brand, okay? Like, Warhol, brand, okay? Pollock, brand. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs, brand. The list goes on and on and on. Like, anybody who has any kind of fame off their art becomes a brand. Iron Maiden, Eddie. If, if someone has made a pinball machine off of the thing you do, you're a brand, okay? That's a pretty good indicator. If if Walmart can sell your name on something, you're a brand. Okay? We got that? And that's how it's always been. Okay? So if you are a good artist, no matter what field you're in, you're a brand. If you're not, then you're not a good artist or you haven't met the person who is going to make you a brand yet. That's it. This person is quite young who made the video, has plenty of time to turn it around, okay? So turn it around. Like, the internet happened so quickly, people have probably already forgotten that this has even happened. I'm probably, the like, the latest person to the party. Like, late meaning if I was a period, I would be peeing on a stick right now. You see what I'm saying? Let me know down below what you think. Please click subscribe and I'll... Stop. Drop. Oh. The last copy I had to type daily. This is gone. This is bought already. So this is going to go into an envelope and go somewhere. Okay. Thank you so much for your purchase. So the rest of the chapbooks for November that are on sale are the Poetry Collection on the Beach and Anxious Anxiety Early Short Stories. Um, from 2007 to 2013. Don't remember how many of these I have left. I think I have four of these, three of these maybe. So these were limited to 50 copies, the first 20 signed. And then um, Anxious Anxiety is 50 copies as well. And um, they're signed. Also, um, the end of everything, paperback. Uh, I have like 10, but yeah, so numbered and signed. But also my brand new, um, ebook is out and it's a big one. It's bigger than most of the uh, chapbook ones. It's like got 40 ish poems in it. Um, it's called Confessions of a Man Whose Everything Exploded. And the artwork on it, I'll probably put it here. There you go. The artwork um, is from like one of my favorite paintings I've ever done called Explosion. But that's up on Amazon now. There'll be a link down below um, with all my other. Uh, books and stuff like that. There you go. We could look at this too. This is the last painting I finished. Um, this one is here. Um, but yeah, so if you want to check out any of my other paintings, they're on my Instagram. <sighs> they're on my Instagram. That is it, uh, at I hate Matt Wall. And if you ever like go through there and see something you like, I even say it in the thing. DM me and like make an offer on something. I'm trying to not sell originals right now. I'm trying to get which ones I like and make prints of them and do all that stuff. But I've sold originals already. So like, I don't care. Like um, if you hit me with a good price, I will, I will bite when it comes to selling my art. Join the crew down below. Um, you get daily live streams and this is a big brought to you by, I'm sorry. So anyway, Type hard, everybody. You could get a sticker that does this down below, too. I'm selling all sorts of shit today. Okay, so type hard. And I will talk to you all later.